Hi there, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and this is your brother sewing machine. Uh, she's all done and ready to come home to you. And um, we're going to do a final test here and in this test we're going to go over how to wind the bobbin, how to thread the machine, how to work the various controls. Um, kind of get you uh, up and running right away. Uh, you may already uh, be very familiar with this machine, but in case you aren't, um, down here below the slide plate you'll find your bobbin case, and the bobbin will drop out. And uh, I'm not a fan of winding new thread over old. Let's take that little bit of thread off of there. To wind the bobbin. Put your thread on the spool pin. Back. Go into this thread guide under, around, and back over here to your bobbin winder. The bobbin winder is right here. Um, it's easier to start the thread if you put it on the bobbin before you put the bobbin on the machine. So, put your thread through the little hole in the side of the bobbin from the inside towards the out. There we go. And hold it with your finger while you Put several wraps on the bobbin just to hold the thread in place while you wind. Now your bobbin's going to turn in clockwise direction, so you want your thread to come onto the top this way. Put your bobbin on the bobbin winder. Push in this lever on the side. And you notice that the uh, this little finger here. Uh, popped into the bobbin. And as you wind your bobbin, the thread's going to push that further and further and further out until when your bobbin is full, it clicks off. Your machine will keep running, but your bobbin's not going to overfill and spill all over. So, declutch your machine by turning the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel about a quarter turn towards you until you feel it hit it stop there. Then you're ready to wind. And no reason to go real fast. Just more chance of tangling things up if you do. That should be plenty of thread for our test. Click this little finger out. Off your bobbin, reclutch your machine by tightening that knob. Uh, your bobbin goes into the bobbin case with the thread coming off this side, coming off the top this way. And your thread is going to double back into this little slot in the side of the bobbin case and up under the leaf spring, which is your lower tension device. You'll feel it kind of click into place and then you'll feel a little bit of drag on the thread. Hold that little lever out and put this on the pin in the center of the bobbin race. Make sure that it clicks all the way into place with that little finger pointing up. It'll click into place when you get it in the right spot. Thread your machine by putting your thread on a spool pin. Go under the thread guide. Don't uh, You don't want to catch the uh, little tension device on the top this time. Over to the thread guide on the front, down between the discs of the tension assembly. 
on your way around, you'll pick up the check spring and put your thread up until it goes into the little notch in the top of the tension assembly. Go behind this big thread guide, through the take-up lever, from right to left, down back into that same thread guide, pick up the thread guide down here, and the thread guide on your needle clamp. Then go through the eye of the needle. It's good to trim a nice clean end on there. It goes through so much easier. From front to back. Put your through oh wait. Hold on to your needle thread, turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution, and it's going to take your thread down, wrap it around. Aha! I don't have the bobbin in all the way. I thought I did. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, there you go. So on your bobbin case, aside from this little lever, there's a finger on top, and that finger goes into a cutout at the top of your bobbin race. So make sure that it goes into that slot. Yeah, and then the bobbin case won't turn while the bobbin inside does. Now holding your needle thread, Turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution, and the needle will take the thread down, the hook will pick it up, wrap it around the bobbin case, and bring up your lower thread. Put your thread between the toes of the presser foot, towards the back of the machine, and you're ready to sew. Uh, this is your stitch width. This is your stitch length, and this button in the center of your stitch length is your reverse. Stitch width, stitch length, um, reverse, and this is your feed drop. Uh, if you want to do darning, or machine embroidery, or you know, patch your pants, that sort of thing. Turn this knob to darn. Then your feed drops never come up above the uh, needle plate, so they don't move the fabric at all. And you can you can move the fabric around. You can move the fabric yourself. To uh, draw pictures if you want. Some people make art on their machines. Let's see. So, we're going to want to set the stitch width. We have a scale of 0 to 4. And we're going to set it at about, about 1 and a half. That's a nice uh, medium stitch for regular fabric. Your stitch width here, you have a scale of 0 to 5. And we're going to do a straight stitch, so we're going to leave that on 0. Your feed drop you want to turn to the normal position, so your feed drops come up and move the fabric. Um, and we're ready to sew. Let's see, that yellow thread is going to show up well on that fabric. This is some denim. I've been test sewing on it, so it's got a few seams on it already. Um, so, here we go. It's a little bouncy because we're on a bouncy plastic table. But that's what I have for now in my uh, packing and shipping room, which is where I'm, I've been making my videos lately. 
So yeah, it's a nice even stitch, uh, nice and straight, even on the top and on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to do a longer stitch. stitch width. If you want to do a zigzag stitch, you're going to need some width. To move the stitch width lever, press in on the keeper on the upper side, move it up as far as you want. We're going to go all the way up to the widest stitch. Then this follower keeper, move to the other side of it. And that locks it into place so you stay right at that uh, wide zigzag. like you could use a hair more tension. This is your tension device and uh, we've set it up so that um, regular tension will be at about three. So when you're sewing on regular fabric, shirting or uh, denim, as long as you're not getting uh, too thick a layer, uh, you're going to want to set your uh, upper tension on about three. And uh, Check your seam and see if it looks loose and loopy on the bottom. Uh, you may need just a little more tension. Uh, if it seems like it's drawing it too tight and puckering, you may have a little too much tension. You may want to let it off a little bit. But usually it, you just move it in small increments. Um, back here, this uh, dial that you can't see is your... Uh, your presser foot adjuster and that uh, adjusts how much tension you're going to put on the fabric. Uh, your choices are silk, cotton, linen, wool, and coating. And that's going from lightweight to heavier weight. Right now we're on cotton. So we should probably be somewhere between linen and cotton, but let's try that. Oh, and uh, while you're zigzagging, you can vary your stitch length so your, uh, your stitches can be closer together. Uh, and if you have the right foot on, you can make it so each stitch is right next to the other and it, make, it makes a nice, wide, decorative seam. Uh, but we don't, have a, we don't have that foot on here now, so we're going to keep a little bit of stitch length. You can adjust it while you're sewing. Careful. Put the stitches closer or further apart. Um, and your stitch width, we put it on five, you can put it on anywhere you want. This is about two and a half. So it's a little narrower as it can. That's about it. Um, we've covered everything. Uh, your presser foot lift grip, of course, is in the back here. This lever. Your light switch is this knob on the side of the face plate. Um, you're going to want to oil. If you sew all day, every day, oil your machine every few, day, every few days. Just one or two drops at each oiling point. And we probably have a user manual. Um, I'll look and see, and I'll send it to you, and it will have an oiling diagram in it. Um, if you're sewing, uh, if you sew once a week, you know, for a couple hours, uh, oil your machine once a month. If you uh, just bring it out on rare occasions, uh, 
to patch your pants or so a special project uh, and you haven't oiled it in three months uh, oil it again because the uh, oil does evaporate and you need that protection so that the parts are sliding on a thin film of oil instead of scraping against each other um, your needle plate here is held on by two small screws uh, when you oil your machine take out those two small screws and lift off your needle plate and uh, brush out the lint uh, that's going to collect around your feed dogs but that does build up there and uh, the uh, lint can be abrasive um, especially polyester lint and a lot of thread nowadays is polyester so uh, brush that stuff out and um, oil your machine uh, oh and your motor it has a little oil, oil hole at each end um, and you're going to want to put one drop of oil in each end possibly two you just don't want to over oil your motor uh, or it will smoke and stink you don't want that so that's about it. You've got a beautiful brother machine, uh, made in Japan, heavy duty, excellent quality. And um, if you have come here from somewhere else on the internet, found a link to this video. Um, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. Uh, we're on Stagecoach Road out here in the coast range of Oregon. So we are Stagecoach Road Sewing dot com and uh, if you come out to our website uh, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of pictures of uh, beautiful machines we've restored over the uh, last couple of decades uh, we've restored well over a thousand machines unfortunately we don't have pictures of everyone but uh, we've got hundreds and hundreds of machines on there and you can see pictures from the front and the back and all sides and uh, usually a, a little bit of information about each machine and at the top of the page there are usually uh, a few sewing machines that are available right now for sale and, uh, they're restored and sewing great and uh, ready to come home to your sewing room so again we are stagecoachroadsewing.com and we'll see you there